Hello, and this is Real Estate Today. Uh, my name is Ed Cox, and my co-host is Maria Babicki. We're both real estate agents here in Simsbury, and we'd like to welcome you to our show. Today, we have a great show planned for you. It's, uh, we're going to be discussing kitchen trends. And uh, this isn't just for uh, those of you out there who are thinking about renovating their kitchen for selling their house. This is an investment in your future, uh, the home you own or the home you wish to own. So I think we've got some good questions lined up for our guest, our special guest, and uh, I think we should get started. So Maria, could you introduce our guest and sure. get the show started? Sure, I'd love to. Our guest today is Lori Cavanaugh of Kitchen and Bath Design and Construction in West Hartford. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Maria. Um, it's such a pleasure to have you here. And if you could just begin by telling us about yourself and how you got started with your career. I'm a graduate of UConn, and I actually studied commercial interior design. So I learned how to be a space planner, how to best utilize spaces and to create functional kinds of environments. And I did that for 10 years and decided that I needed to change in my design career and found someone who was doing kitchens and baths. And my mom was actually a caterer here in Simsbury. And so I had grown up around food and entertaining and all that. That seemed like a good combination. So many, many years ago, I jumped into this new career path and haven't looked back since. Wow. Um, now about your firm, how many people do you employ? I have five people. Okay. And how many designers? There are two of us. Okay. And uh, something interesting is you've actually been on House Hunters uh, Remodelers. That's right. Yeah. When was that? Last March. We um, were mm -hmm. approached by the show to uh, do an episode for them and we did a home out in Stores Mansfield. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. A lot of hard work, but it was really a fun thing to do. Yeah. And your company really does right from the start right through to the finish. That's correct. We, the, um, the way we designate that is as a design build model or turnkey. So we manage all of the design process and then we hire and supervise all of the construction elements as well. Now how did you decide, uh, decide to go from a designer to a full service firm? It actually was at the request of clients that had hired me to do the design package and then they were responsible to find somebody to build the project. And folks were challenged with that, trying to put together a team of, of people. You know, you need many, many subcontractors to do a project like this. And so unless a homeowner has access to those people and is comfortable coordinating that or a general contractor, it becomes really challenging. So people came back and said, why don't you just manage this project from start to finish? So it seemed like a good idea. It does. It makes it so easy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what are the overall trends that you see in kitchen design right now? Um, well, you know, our lifestyles have changed a lot, even in the time that I've been in the kitchen business. So we're looking for spaces that are more open. Um, kitchen is less one separate room from, from the rest of the house. So people are looking to knock down walls between dining rooms or other living spaces. Um, we're looking at more projects being done in a kitchen than just cooking. You know, lots of things happening. It really has become the center of the household. Um, and the idea that we're trying to support not only multiple tasks, but also multiple people doing those tasks who might be of different ages, different physical abilities. So it's a busier space. We're having to accommodate a lot more than just cooking in those areas. I mean, I've seen kitchens with desks. Yes. Yeah. Computer systems, yeah. TV sets. Yeah. yeah. Dogs and cats, pet care and including pets in the planning process. I'm working on a project out in stores. They have two big dogs and big dog beds and they're in the kitchen and we need to accommodate that. I had a client in West Hartford that had parrots in cages. and We had to take that into account as well. So it truly is the center of the house. What is the most consistently asked question that you come across? What's it going to cost? Okay. <laughs> and how long will it take? Um, How long would it take? <laughs> <laughs> um, properly planned, and that's, that really is the key, is that it's really important to do the planning plot process really thoroughly. So when you get started in the building part, all of the decisions have been made, all of the materials have been ordered. If you, if you manage that part of the process carefully, then the construction time shouldn't be much more than six to eight weeks, barring putting additions on, lots of interior renovations and that kind of thing. But it's a pretty straight up kitchen project really shouldn't run much more than six to eight weeks. Um, the people could still maybe be uh, living in the home, but just uh, 
going out to eat more often yes. than they than they might normally. We actually set up temporary kitchens for our clients. So we'll designate a family room or an adjacent dining room or that kind of thing and set tables up and we do two burner um, cooktops, microwave, put the refrigerator in there. We actually provide a gift basket that has a lot of the um, paper products in it. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like camping out. We do not encourage people to try to get back into the space. Some people will say, oh, we'll leave a sink cooked up, for example. I don't really want people, I don't want to encourage them to be in the, in the site when we're under construction like that. It's just not safe. It must be a very nerve-wracking thing, though, because people, I would imagine, are very concerned about their investment, that they want it to, you know, look good in 10 years from now as yes. well. Yeah, yeah. So how do you manage that? It's a good question. Um, I think it's really important when people are designing these spaces to be mindful that some of the major elements, cabinets, countertops, maybe flooring, maybe not so much that, are, I don't want to say neutral because that connotes something maybe a little dull or boring, but, right. but that it's, um, those choices are things that they can live with over a period of time that they will always like the choices that they've made. Um, and first of all, you've got to be highly functional, right? We want, to, we want to approach the function part first. And then the aesthetic piece is the, the timeliness kind of trend or, or question. Um, so pick the materials that need to stay in a, in a way that you'll be comfortable with them. And then add the pizzazz, if you will, or the decorative or more trendy um, components in places that can be changed. So backsplashes, light fixtures, wall colors, those kinds of things. So five or ten years out, if you'd like to have a change in the space, you can change some of those smaller ticket items, get a new fresh look, but not get into remodeling the space again. A question that I had, too, is that when we're talking about kitchens, the, you know, there's all different size homes. So, I mean, can you do it in a small kitchen? Can you do a full kitchen redesign in a small cape house? You know, that's a great question. And, and one of the things, in, truthfully, I say to people is I actually like small kitchens. I like designing small kitchens. It's much more challenging. But, yes, we design very small projects and sometimes those projects need designers more than the big ones do because they're trying to fit so many things in. Um, we use the same technique and the same personnel. Everybody gets the same treatment whether it's a little kitchen or a, or a very big kitchen. The principles are all the same and the execution is the same, it's just on a smaller scale. Now um, if someone comes to you and they're not really, they don't have a lot of um, ability to visualize mm -hmm. what it will look like. How, how do you me. handle that? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> um, well, we have drawing tools, and we, we, we do a lot of drawing for our projects and uh, lots of sample materials. So we'll order a sample door and the finish that you like so that you can see the exact thing. We order countertop and flooring samples. You know, so you have hands-on samples. We keep a very complete library of projects so that we can refer to those. So a lot of the trends, you're going to see similarities in a lot of the kitchen spaces. And then we have um, a software package that renders things three-dimensionally and you have the ability to kind of walk in and walk around and see the space. Oh, that's really neat. So it helps people be able to visualize. Plus, I, uh, in your showroom, um, I wanted every kitchen in there. <laughs> I think there was only one thing. I didn't care for the one countertop, the soapstone. Yeah. I didn't yeah. care that for that. That was my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I but, loved it. But I mean, <laughs> wow. I, I could have just said, I want that kitchen, yeah. and I could leave, and we'd be done. But uh, So there's some things that you can actually physically touch and see, not just the well, and in and, the, and I'm glad you I'm glad you said that, because um, the showroom is very carefully designed to be representative of pretty much all the materials you'd want so that you can see larger pieces of it. Um, different edge details on countertops, different cabinet styles, so that it's, it really is a, a teaching tool mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and there was there's the red counter and you know some really bright colors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. when we sat down, yeah, I thought that was so helpful but, uh, when we were able to see all the photos that yes. were on the yeah. wall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was yeah. super bright. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that I thought we were super impressed with was. Um, this kitchen came across, and you said you had done that quite a long time ago, yes. and it looked current. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I think that's what everybody wants, yeah. you know? It's very important. I think I was saying to you guys that I had been out at a project last week for a client that I had done a kitchen for 19 years ago, and walked in, and you would have thought it was done. And they've, they've not changed anything, mm -hmm. including some pretty dramatic choices in terms of the wall colors are very saturated blue, for example, and the mm -hmm. tile backsplashes 
bright and fun and interesting looking. Mm -hmm. um, for them, the benefit is that if they moved, somebody could paint the walls a completely different color and change the backsplash out and it would have a totally different look to it. But the basic layout and the, the bigger pieces that they selected really are timeless and will continue to look good. Mm -hmm. That's part of my story. A number of those slides were intentionally taken 12, 15 years out to say if you do it right the first time, you don't, you shouldn't have to change it around. And it also shouldn't be boring. You yeah. know, I'm always concerned that people are going to think, oh, it's not going to be interesting because it's so timeless. Mm -hmm. The little black dress theory that we talked about. Right. Yes. That's right. right. So you get the little black dress and you put great new jewelry on it, new shoes for you, Maria. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and make it look new and fresh and, and fashionable. So we can do the same thing in a kitchen. So we had uh, spoken about that, like easy things to change, and you said backsplash. Yep. Lighting. Yeah. So backsplash is most of what we're doing is tiles. So it's not, it's not without cost or disruption, but it's going to be significantly less expensive than changing countertops or cabinets out. And backsplashes are an area that seem to trend. We see a lot of materials, um, fresh new materials coming in all of the time. Light fixtures too can make a very big statement. I think lighting is one of the areas that's changed the most since I've been in the industry, that it's becoming a really important decorative element. We've always used under cabinet lights and recessed down lights for functional lighting, but now some very dramatic light fixtures for kitchens, and they can clearly say this is a contemporary kitchen or this is a traditional kitchen, and if you change them out, you're going to get a different look. Same thing with cabinet hardware. So what are we seeing specifically for backsplashes right now? Um, almost exclusively tile of some sort or the other. So it could be ceramic tiles, um, there could be borders mixed in. It's very popular over a cooking area where you have a larger space that you might do a framed um, section with a pattern or a mural kind of a thing in that. Um, lots of natural materials, so marble and slate and th materials of that sort. Uh, glass has been very popular. Um, glass mixed with natural stones are popular. Some other things, beadboard, at wainscoting, the little uh, v-groove or beadboard kind of material is also nice in a particular environment if we're trying to do maybe a farmhouse look or that kind of thing. Um, some folks will put countertop material matching all the way up. We don't see a lot of that. Tile really is the big, the big trend now. How about cabinetry, kitchen cabinetry? What's, uh, what colors and materials are they doing? White there? and off-white and more white. <laughs> <laughs> um, white has really been the, the cabinet of choice since the late 80s, believe it or not. We keep sort of waiting for that to pass. But, <clears throat> excuse me, along the lines of the little black dress theory, you got the little black pants and the white shirt. You know, a good, crisp, white cotton shirt on either a man or a woman always looks good. It's never going to go out of fashion. It's kind of the same thing with cabinets. They're mm -hmm. never going to go out of fashion. Um, you can change the look of it by wall color and, and some other materials. So we're still seeing lots of interest in that. And then various shades of gray. So gray paint in different, different kinds of colors of gray, different tones of gray, or gray stain on wood. It reminds me of like a barn board look or a driftwood look, right. that kind of an appearance. Yep, I see that. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little bit of dark wood, and we're mixing a lot of materials. So you might have a cream color or white on the outside edges of the kitchen, and maybe a large dark island in the middle that's intended to look a little bit more like furniture. So those kinds of colors. Cabinets are, and, and overall designs of kitchens are a little simpler than they have been say 10 or 12 years ago, we were doing lots of carved moldings and fluted and brackets and a lot of detail. And it's moving back towards a much simpler, almost European design. So very simple recessed panel cabinet doors, even flat fronted cabinets are popular. Less, less detail, a little cleaner, a little more sleek looking, maybe not all the way to European, but kind of heading in that direction. I see in my notes here is mm -hmm. concealed hardware. And, yes. Yeah. So in terms of trends um, from a construction standpoint, we're following the European trend, which is for the hinges to be on the insides of the cabinets um, and for the doors to sit completely over the structure of the cabinet. So once again, you get a much cleaner line look. The exception to that is some folks like the look of inset doors where the doors sit into the frame. Looks a little bit more like furniture construction, but lots less um, interest in that than there is in this European styling. Okay. Um, and as far as um, popular choices for uh, countertops, what are mm -hmm. you seeing there? 
So the two most popular choices right now would be granite or quartz. Quartz is a man-made stone, if you will. They crush stone up and mix it with uh, binding agents and pour slabs of that. And the benefit over quartz, uh, excuse me, granite, which is, comes out of the ground, is a natural material is that quartz doesn't require sealing. It's stain resistant. One of the interesting things that's happened is there's been a big trend towards light or white colored countertops. And quartz really fills the bill for that. Granite is problematic. Marble's problematic in terms of staining in light materials in particular. The quartz allows you to get the, the f bright, fresh look of a white countertop or lighter colored countertop and not have the worry of red wine or those kinds of things. The other interesting things that going on in countertops is um, we're moving away from polished finishes. It used to be very, everything was high polished right. kind of a look. The first move was to what's called honed, H-O-N-E-D, which is they lightly sand it and take that bright polish off. And now they're going another step further and doing what's called leathered right. or brushed, where they actually um, use a tool to brush out some of the um, minerals out of the stone so you get a textural feel. Just, it's a fashion business, so we keep changing it up so that it's interesting and fun and trying new things. You had an example of that in your showroom. Yeah. And then I think I saw it at one of the houses I was showing over Probably. the weekend. Yeah. And I was actually saying, oh, and this is, I think, a that? leathered <laughs> countertop. And, uh, you know, I, I was... Uh, Apply for a job. <laughs> that was my second favorite, but I still like the soapstone the best. <laughs> well, and I wanted to also say to you that, that while quartz and granite are the two most popular, we are doing some materials, uh, some soapstone materials, which is also a natural stone, comes out of the earth. It's a little softer. It develops a patina, so it gets a little right. aged looking, if you will. Mm -hmm. And in certain houses, that looks great. And other people want it a little more pristine looking than that. We do some wood countertops, um, and we mix countertops. Like we mix cabinets, we sometimes will do the island in a different material. Or even if we have a desk in the kitchen, that might be something different. So there's the opportunity to mix things. Um, and you can mix from a practical standpoint as well as an aesthetic standpoint. So the quartz would be more durable, require less maintenance. So you might want to use that in the areas that get the most wear and tear and then select some of these other areas where you're looking more for dramatic impact and less concerned about the, the um, practical applications. But if you're very concerned about scratches, like if you're a person that drops your keys on the counter, things like that, which um, surfaces would not be for you? Not for me. Yeah. Um, well, wood is not going to withstand those kinds of um, things. But, mm -hmm. you know, wood, like wood floors, it's the same thing. They patina. They're going to scratch. It is the nature of the material. So if you're going to select a wood countertop, you kind of have to accept that. But mm -hmm. it, that's going to take much less wear and tear than some of these other materials. Quartz is probably the most durable, mm -hmm. um, stain-resistant, very hard surface, um, resists scratching. That probably would be the best choice. My, my question, like, it, I'm just thinking down there. Let's say, for example, you have a countertop and then you do, you decide to do another piece that you, can you go back and order the exact same quartz where you might not be able to get the same granite? Is that something that you'd be able to well, that's, match it? You know, no one's ever asked that question and it's a really good one. Um, so the answer is there's no guarantee that right. that's still going to be in production. Okay. You know, so right now, um, if I buy from a particular manufacturer, they may offer 25 colors of quartz, and each manufacturer offers a little different color. Five or ten years out, they may not carry those same colors or patterns. Okay. Um, that would be a perfect opportunity to introduce another material in a way that it made it look like it was intentional. Right. When, when I teach kitchen design, I say to people, you have to be really careful about this mixing materials things, because it can look bad, and it can look like you made a mistake or something broke and you had to replace it or failed and you had to replace it as opposed to we intentionally mixed it so that it would be of interest. I use the analogy of men dressing with you know a pattern jacket and a pattern shirt and a pattern tie done well it's beautiful a lot of European styling in that way done badly it looks like you just came from goodwill and it's not a good look so you have to be really careful in the kitchen that it's done done well. So your approach to the kitchen, it sounds like it's really holistic. Is mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. When, uh, when I go to see a project, um, I often ask if I can walk around the balance of the house so that I can see the relationship of that room to other rooms and also the outdoors, 
because we're not working in just an isolated box. We want to see how the whole thing is going to fit in. And sometimes when we're trying to solve a kitchen problem, simply moving a door or door opening or a window will solve a design problem in a very big way. And if I don't pay attention to what's going on around um, the perimeter of the space, I might not pick that up. Okay. Um, now what's going on with kitchen flooring? Um, lots of wood floors still, both natural wood, trees, and manufactured woods. Um, and there's, there's a, a very big story about that, which we don't have time to get into. But the look of wood is, continues to be very popular. As I said, wood is going to be an issue in terms of its durability. And you have to pay attention to, do you have pets in the home that potentially you're going to scratch? Are you near to an, an entrance where people or pets are going to walk sand onto that floor and potentially scratch it? It's still a very popular material. I prefer, if we're putting a wood floor in a kitchen, that it be the same kind of wood that would be in the rest of the house, as opposed to the kitchen being a separate wood floor. It looks peculiar to me to mix it in that way. Tile is the other choice that's very popular now. Um, lots of slate looks or right. natural material yep. kinds of looks. One of the big trends in tile, very important trend, large scale. So we're doing 16 inch square, 24 inch, oblong tiles, 12s by 24s, and mixes of sizes, which I haven't seen since the 80s, where you take one material and mix it in a 6x6, six six, a 6x12, six and a 12x12, 12 12, let's say, and you get a pattern kind of a thing. thing that's very important to understand is those large scale tiles, large format tiles, are much more challenging to install properly. The underlayment has to be absolutely rigid or you're going to get into cracking and breaking. If it's not flat, you can't get the, the seems all to come together in a flat way. So they're tricky to install. You need to be certain you're working with somebody who really has some experience with that. And I, I can attest to that. I, yes. I, I showed a house with these big square and there was a crack Cracks. that ran right yep. down yeah. the entire kitchen. And it was in this, it was. That's a very expensive repair. Right. You gotta, gotta pull everything up, put all new subfloor down and put new tile in. So if it, if it goes bad, it's, it's not going bad in a small way. Now, uh, in your showroom, again, I asked you about a flooring in the, in the room where we yes. met. Yes, yeah, yeah. And I walked in, and I, I really admired that flooring, and I was surprised what material it was It was vinyl. That? It's a vinyl floor. Um, I am seeing more vinyl product, sheet goods, and also tiles, square tiles. Um, they're showing more of that, and, and frankly, they've made some great strides in terms of doing materials that are good looking, like that floor that's in my conference room. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really competent at this, but yeah. I got down on the floor and, and was touching <laughs> to it, see and it. I, yeah. I didn't yeah. know what it was. So Do you know, was, it's it all photography, impressive. interestingly enough. They're, they're taking pictures of those materials and transferring that, so they have much better ability to make things look very realistic. That's really, that was... As far as the tile, just one more comment yep. on it. it um, isn't that easier to clean because there's not so much grout, though, with these larger tiles? It's a good point. Yes, absolutely. When uh -huh. you've got a larger scale tile, you have fewer grout joints. So, yes, that is the case. The, you know, the, the downside of tile is that it's hard to stand on. So if, there, if you have any knee or hip or lower back right. trouble, standing on it can be tiring. If you drop something on the tile, you could break it the tile or whatever you're dropping on it. Mm -hmm. But from a maintenance standpoint, it's great. And if you do have pets, big dogs, it's a wonderful material. You can also put heat underneath a tile floor. Um, now, what other trends are you seeing in kitchens? And, and one particular question comes to mind as far as like hardware. Yes. Because people always ask, well, what finish should we use? What's most current? Yes. Yeah. Um, we talk about holistic design. Here's, here's a really interesting place where we have to look at it pretty carefully because people will say, well, I have stainless steel appliances, so I need to have everything else be stainless, sink, faucet, and cabinet hardware. And that's not how I look at it at all. And it depends, too, on the overall look that we're trying to do. I'm working with somebody now who has stainless appliances in a sink, and we're going to put oil drop bronze, a brown, brown tone finish, on the cabinet hardware and on the light fixtures. There's some of that color in the granite, so you can mix it. It's another one of those you have to be really yeah. careful how you do it. And often if you use one color, you want to repeat it so that it looks like it was an intentional thing that you did. Um, we often mix knobs and handles in the kitchen, not, not just a knob on every cabinet. It's like jewelry. It really gives you the opportunity to make a design statement. And is, is stainless uh, going to go out of style? I think it's here to stay. 
I can't believe it. Um, it's been so popular for so long, but the beauty of it is that it, it looks good with traditional environments. It looks good with contemporary environments. <clears throat> Pardon me, if one appliance uh, fails to perform over time, you can add another one in and the color is going to match. You can mix black appliances with stainless right. if you choose yep, to do that exactly. because there's always a little bit of black on the stainless and vice versa. I think it's going to stay. Um, one uh, question we want to ask too is about islands. Um, right. They're very popular, but it seems like everybody's trying to squish an island <laughs> in a kitchen and it doesn't always work. You're absolutely right. So how do you figure out if it works or not? Well, um, the rule, if you will, from the National Kitchen and Bath Association is you want 42 inches of space from the edge of the island to any adjacent countertop. If the room is particularly large and there's a couple of people who are actively cooking, you may even want the spaces to be wider. Mm -hmm. And people make mistakes and they try to squeeze it into a space where it's not going to work. And it's, it's not only functionally is it not going to work, it looks bad. I mean, the, it just feels very cramped and crowded. So you're better off to find another design that's going to work than to put an island in, in a space that's not really designed physically to be. And, and uh, my question in the islands was, is, has a, has a good-sized island taken the place of a kitchen table? Um, you know, one of the interesting things is when I started in this business 30 years ago, we were getting rid of all the kitchen tables and putting people on islands with stools. Now we're as people are asking for both options, that they have a place to sit down and eat in the kitchen if space allows, and then maybe a couple of stool spaces. Um, very hard to teach kids manners and to get them comfortable with learning how to dine properly when you've got them on a bar stool at an island. So for family dining, people want to be sitting around a table. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's a good answer, too. I mean, I can see that for sure. Yeah. Um, what is your best piece of advice for a person um, that wants to have, a, you know, has an upcoming kitchen project? Hire a kitchen professional. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of people who design kitchens, quote unquote, who don't have the training or the specific background for this. And, and I use the analogy that I wouldn't go to my kidney guy for my heart surgery. This is a place you can spend a lot of money and make some pretty expensive mistakes if you're not dealing with somebody who's got the experience specifically in kitchen design. It sounds like spending the money up front saves you a lot of money down the road. I, people have told me that through the years, repeatedly. Well, you know, we could sit here, I think, for <laughs> another hour and a half discussing all kinds of things, but we're running short on time. Now, you also do um, bathrooms. I do. So we hope that you will come back to the show I and would tell love us about to do that. that. Thank you. But yes. It's been a real treat. It has. Thank, thank, you, thank you very, very much, much for having me. Um, as always, thank you for watching the show, and we'll see you next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.